underneath the ground in Honolulu, Hawaii. I'm Shumai Shirishima, and you're listening to Doom Business. Ah, aloha, folks. We're back again. This is Doom Business. Business is dooming. And again, we have our very special guest, Christian. Hello, Christian. Uh, hi. It's good to be back here. I have to apologize for the last show. I see that your your thigh has a huge bloody band-aid on it. It turned out to be nothing too serious. Oh, really? I, th- I thought it was the implant moving around again. What well, was. It was the implant um, being energized by an alien laser, but nothing to worry about. It, alien laser? It turned la- out fine. Really? Well, on our next show, you've got to tell us about this. This, this uh, next story. It's not the, too much to say. I mean, the alien laser comes by every couple months, you know. <laughs> this sounds like a big deal to me. But granted, I respect your your thigh, so I, I will let this pass for now. But So this episode is called Satan Talk. Now, you, te- you told me to call the show this because I have no idea really what's going on here. Well, as you know, the devil, Lucifer... Satan. No, those all are the same people. Capital D. Mostly, yes. And this is a very real entity in our world. Now, whatever your religious beliefs are, and I, I think you're not really sure what yours you're either a Christian or a Catholic, right? I am like I am like the character from There Will Be Blood. Yes. I embrace all religions. My story involves both, actually. It involves both Protestants and Catholics, so you might like this one. You see, I, I had an actual encounter hmm. with the devil. Wow. I just got goosebumps. And I lived to tell the tale. Look at my stomach here. See, it's all bumpy. Some of us know the difference between a Catholic and a Christian, which okay, I do not. Okay, well, it's like... Okay, here's, here's, here's how it goes, okay? All right. It's just a very quick rundown here. So there's different kinds of Christians, right? So, look, Christians are the number one main are they still? fruit on the tree where everything branches from. Is that right? Well... Because Catholics came from them, right? Yes. Uh, I mean, all Catholics like that. are Christians. Christians are like the overall group, okay? So within that group, there's the Catholics who believe in, you know, the Pope and all that. Yes. Who lives in, in Rome. With now, the, with the fish hat? A few hundred years ago, some people broke away from the Catholic Church, right? Uh, Martin Luther nailed something to the wall, to the, to the door of a church, and he said, we're not going to follow the Catholic Church anymore, and they wanted to protest against it. Protestants. Hence, yes. They Protestants. Do, that's right. Wait, is that actually what, where the word came from? Yeah. And over time, there were different branches of churches that, that are Christians, but they don't follow the Catholic Church. People like the Anglicans. Never heard of them. The Baptists. The um, Episcopalians. And these are all different little groups that do their own thing. Mm. Mm. But follow the same, um, the, the same master. Yes, or so they think. Now. Interesting. Go on. Well, let me begin at the beginning. This is, you might want to settle in. Yes, begin at the beginning. Wrap a Snuggie around you. Snuggie, now that's... And drink some hot cocoa. Yes. Because this is going to be a long story. And I assume you're listening to this late at night, because you should be. Because um, that's the best time for a scary story. Mm. That or the early morning. All right. My story begins. I was sitting at a cafe alone, uh, doing my thoughts, you know. Mm-hmm. Doing up my thoughts, practicing your your remote viewing, probably. Yeah, as I'm as I often do, just I I sit alone for hours. You know how it is. Mm-hmm. Well, an attractive young woman and man came up to me, came up to my table, and they had me a flyer, and the flyer said, "New Jesus," and they explained to me. First of all, they said, "Are you bored?" You know, whatever. And then they said, well, look at this then. And they said, new Jesus. Now, this is a group that we think you'd be good to join. This is a Christian, youthful group of fun and life now and th- energy. Now, you're not telling me this now. They, they told you this. 
That's what they told me, okay, yes. Good. And I looked at the flyer, and it was really nice, and it said, we have free Christian rock and free frozen yogurt at our services. No. And coffee. Music, rock and roll music. That's right. Christians have rock and roll music? Oh, they definitely do. The Protestants do. Now, the Catholics don't do that. The Catholics I, yeah, are more Yeah, I was uptight. raised Catholic, I think. I mean, I must have been, because I don't remember any... Any rock and roll music at my church. See, the, the, the Catholics, because you were Catholic, apparently. It has to be. The, yeah, yeah, because I, I, don't, I don't remember any They're rock and They're a lot music. more focused on tradition. The, they have fancy robes and, mm -hmm. and sta staves. Oh, and that, staffs. That, that smoking UFO ball in a chain that they throw around. Yeah, exactly. They dress like magicians. They dress in fancy robes. Right. And they're very into ancient traditions and old churches and stuff. Right. Yeah, now, I mean, that's how... Th then I must have been Catholic. Like, that's what I went through. No, the Protestants are more of the new, lots fresh of, people. Lots of guilt. Lo lots of confessionals happening there. That's right. I couldn't act and, like a kid. You know how kids have wandering hands? That's, hmm. the, that's, that's the number one thing that they really frowned upon. Literally. I don't want to get too graphic, but adults would know what I'm talking about. I know what you're talking about. Okay, but go on with your story, please. You're talking about playing Game Boy, right? No? Uh, you could call it that, yes. So, I looked at this, and you know, this attractive lady, and she said, we have fun young people who come, I mean, not too young, but you know, adults, who uh, enjoy this rock music, enjoy this frozen yogurt, and some good, you know, God stuff. <clears throat> so I, being very lonely at the time, said, okay, I'll check this out. Hmm. And it, there was an address on the flyer. You, you might make, make, make a few friends or... Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. So I showed up there and I followed the map on the flyer. And little did I know, it led to an old Arby's that was in hmm. a... You know, like in a, in a shopping mall, um, over by Salt Lake, there's this, uh, there's like a strip mall, basically. And then off to the side of it, there's a building that used to be an Arby's. Yes. But they closed down a few years ago. Well, I didn't know this, but this uh, church somehow got, you know, it became their headquarters, hmm. their base here at a beautiful old Arby's. Be beautiful. Yeah. Well, why was it Beautiful. I, I don't know. I just like Arby's architecture, that's all. No, it's fine. I mean, they're all different. It's true. But you know what's better? Taco Bell architecture. Well, you, you know? Oh, it's built I like a little Taco Bell thing, I like a little hacienda. I'm not a fan of the of the Mexican structures. I like um, the McDonald's look myself. Now, when I came to this Arby's at this this service they're holding, this former Arby's, at this at this nice little church... I noticed some weird things as I as I walked up to the building. Mm. Now, let me guess here. First thing that's weird, I want to guess, people are overly friendly. Was that one? Well, not that being that friendly happened later. Not that being friendly is bad. It's just a bit off-putting because it seems fake when when they do that. That is a part of it. That is a part of it. Okay, so I'm on the nose for but that. But actually, one. before that even happened, the first weird thing I noticed was in the parking lot. There were five dead centipedes on the ground. Oh, here we go again. And they were forming a pentagram shape. Oh, wait, one, two, five, yeah, right. So that worried me. How do you know if it was upside down? Maybe you're just standing in the wrong spot. Unless there are people already around it. No, I, you know, maybe I was looking at it the wrong way. Maybe it was just a star. Either way, that's weird. Hmm. And then I walked past the drive-thru uh, window thing. Oh, right, because it was an Arby's drive -thru. And there's a little speaker there. And from the speaker, I heard whispering. And I put my ear up next to it. And it sounded like Aramaic. What does that sound like? Could you give us a sample? Okay, well, you know Mel Gibson? Yes. The ancient language of the Holy Land. But it went away. So I wasn't sure if that's hmm. what I heard. You know how it's hard to tell in the drive-thru speaker like what well, you're yeah. hearing? I think it well, was Aramaic. Did though. they see you? Like, were they whispering for you? Or you just maybe caught them having a casual conversation without them knowing? 
I don't know who they were. I don't know you where these see voices in. were coming from. You couldn't see inside. It was coming from the speaker, you know? Hmm. The not 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 the drive-through window, but the speaker. So. Oh right, right, right. Yeah, I forgot that they're separate. And later on, I found out that that speaker wasn't even attached. It had no electricity. Wow, that is, wow. Now listen, I went inside, and it seemed like a fun atmosphere. They were they were doing what they called jamming with Jesus. Now there was that should be the name of the show. There was like three guys with guitars up on the stage, and they were just kind of rocking out a little bit. Really? And you they had actually... these little disco light things, like, hmm. you know, the, the little light that, that moves around and has colors that comes out Wait, of it. Wait, just one? I don't know, like a couple. Really? So they're doing the rock and roll? What, what kind of rock and roll? Like Metallica rock and roll? Or like Back to the Future rock and roll? Yeah, it's like Huey, Huey Lewis and the News rock and roll. But it was really more like a, just a jam session, you know. It wasn't like really structured songs. <laughs> and then, and then at some point, at some point after about twenty minutes, the um, the lead guitarist kind of, you know, paused and he kind of went, "Hey guys," got on the microphone. And he said, "Hey guys, I, I'd like to take this down for a minute, Jesus." And then, you know, he talked about Jesus a little bit. Is it like call and response? Call and response. It's a term in music where someone talks. Well, first there's music, -na 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 -na, and then it stops, and then it says, like, I want to rock all night long, and then more music, -na 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 -na. and then, oh, mm -hmm. yeah, -na 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 -na. was it like that? It, it was kind of. It, there seemed to be a pattern emerging yes. of people interacting with the song. So uh, I sat down, and, you know, I was sitting next to um, Lucy, Who's who that? was well? She was the attractive young woman what who she... first approached now, me. Look, as and as men, we, we, we all have side. we all yes, have different yes. views on what's attractive. Now, yeah. First, I'll, I'll tell you my my um, traits of an attractive woman, and then you tell me how this Lucy looks. Okay. I like Japanese women. Now, how did Lucy look? Well, she didn't look Japanese to me. So no, no also, go. Well, okay, no go then. Well, I'm no. good. Uh, she kind of looked like. Remember those Martians I, I mentioned last week? Egyptians, the the black uh, ebony ones. Yeah, but I mean, you know, with clothes. But she wasn't black though. But anyway. Oh. She was sitting on one side, and the attractive guy was sitting on the other side of me, just in case. And his name was Damien. They passed around the collection plate, you know, collection basket. And they said, hey, you know, give whatever you can or whatever. Now, all I had in my pocket was a $100 bill, so I put it in there. Now, here's the thing. You may recall that I described to you earlier, um, I never said what I did for a living. Oh, yeah, you still haven't told me. That's right. All I know is that you live in the woods or your old house was in the woods. Let's just um, say, and this occurred back, you know, about a year ago. But let's just say that I had a lot of money at the time. Yeah, and you have enough right now to get by. Well, I spent most of it on the Sky Fortress, but back then, okay, let's put it this way. Back then, a $100 bill to me was like what like a, a $1 bill would be to you, okay? Wow. So I, that's all I had in my pocket, so I put it there. Oh, and, they're, and they were impressed? Well, I mean, I looked sideways towards Damien and his eyes got really big. <laughs> was he smiling at least? He's just he 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 seemed like he was trying to hide it, you know. Oh, really? But, he, but his eyes got huge for just a second, and then and then they went back to normal size. W was he Japanese? Yes, he was. So you know things were going okay, and then after the service, they went, "Hey, you know, I want you to meet the pastor or whatever, you know. Hmm. Maybe maybe uh, you could join us, you know, in our in our uh, brotherhood." Hmm. Is what they called it. So I went, okay, fine. And the, and the pastor was, the, of course, the lead guitar player. Now, he was also, for his day job, he's a Christian magician. Hmm. What does that entail? Well, he puts on different kind, of, you know, like a stage magician. So just magic? Sure. In like, the name of God? Like he'll do a thing where he pulls colored paper out of his hand and it's a long string of oh paper. Oh, my goodness. Now, don't tell me. And so, and don't, don't tell me he but, does things. But he's the Christian version of it. He doesn't do anything... Where it's like, I'm already insulted just thinking about this, but he doesn't do anything where it's like a giant cross and he's like nailed to it, and it's like, ooh, will he get out of it somehow? Of course not. Okay. He nails his assistant to the cross. Oh, well then. 
But not with real nails, though. So they like you and they want to embrace you. They do embrace yeah. you, physically and mentally. And I was pretty lonely, of course, so I said yes. So I talked to... They introduced me, as I was saying, to the pastor. He's a guy named Greg, Greg Lee. But he calls himself The Crow, because that's his magician name. The Crow, that's good. Yeah. Hmm. He calls himself very dramatic. Crow Lee. That's his. That's his magician name. Hmm. Crow Lee. Now, he has a lot of uh, a lot of ideas about how to how to grow the church and make it more popular and so on. Uh, he's he's a really cool guy. He has he has a crazy mustache. Really hip though. A really hip guy. And he introduced me to uh, his wife actually, Mrs. Lee, and. Hmm. His wife, interestingly enough, was she was a like a twenty something uh young woman uh in a wheelchair and she's mute. Hmm. And they have nine kids. Nine so she kids. spends all her time taking care of, of the pastor's kids, of course. In a wheelchair? As far as I can tell, she doesn't talk. Hmm. Anyway, that's his wife. I'm you know, I'm sure that uh they're very happy together. Oh, by the way, I found out later. So I joined the church, and I, I, I went to their um, their events from time to time, you know. Kind of got to know them, got to kind of got to be friends. Now, of course, Lucy, the attractive woman who uh, found out that she was married, actually. Oh. To, now, this is the one who's not the one that I would like. They use her Japanese. for recruiting, but, you know, that's normal. Well, you know, one time, actually, I was, um, I know the, these people, these recruiters, because they almost got me for Scientology. Mm-hmm. I only. She didn't even tell me where we were going. She just said, "No, maybe this." So is a also, young lady approached you this, for this, Scientology. This is also my fault. I mean, this is also dumb on my part. Mm-hmm. How I didn't question any of it. So apparently, if you're a hot Japanese girl, you could just tell me, "Let's go here," and I will go. Yeah. But then I found out. I looked around. And I was like, "Oh, I'm in a building with the word Scientology all over the place," and basically they wanted me to buy books. And the girl vanished. Maybe she was out getting some other guy. I was hurt. I, was, I, 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 I thought she really liked me. Anyway. Yes. But you're fine with this. Sure. We got to be friends, you know, with everybody. You're friends um, with her, but you, you, you never see her again. Or well, at least that day. Well, no, she was around. And uh, she's one of the main people actually really in the church. And also her husband. Damien, who was the attractive guy, as you mm. remember. Now, he's a manly man. Oh, one of those? Guy. One of these guys that they would like, that the girls would like? He mm. worked He worked at a recycling center, you know, where they recycle cans and stuff like that. Mm. So he does a lot of manual labor mm. all day. But he had a lot of ideas. Like, he always kept on saying, oh, let's, you know, let's remodel this Arby's and make it look less like an Arby's. <laughs> like, I'll bring my tools and stuff, you know, we can... Like, we can, like, tear up these walls or whatever and, and, like, change everything. Wait, wait, wait. So it still looked like the inside of an Arby's? Sure. There were still, like, you know, so the tables counter was and, there still? and, like, benches. Yeah. The, 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 the counter was had become, like, the stage where they played yeah, their so guitars. Yeah, so I was going to say stuff. that. And all the congregation would sit in the, uh, the tables and the uh, booths, the booths used by the Arby's. Hmm. Uh, it wasn't a huge group, it's obviously. a small group, Yes. Well, they got a good maybe 100 people into that room. It was a little bit crowded. Hmm. So I helped out these guys for a while. Uh, How long exactly? Probably a few months. Really? I did not hear about this? And they hmm. kept on saying, hey, you know, you're going to rise up in the ranks a little bit. And then, How did that uh, make you feel? It, it made me feel good. You like actually I'm being would accepted have, here. You actually would have gone all the way with these guys? Like well, you become know, like a preacher of some kind. Here's the thing: I talked, I talked to, I talked to Greg, the crow. Now, who's Greg? Oh, the crow, Lee, Greg, hmm. who is their leader, right? I mean, he's their pastor, basically, uh, as well as a magician. And you know, it's interesting that a lot of um, a lot of magicians have a lot of similarities to priests, if you think about it. E- I can kind of see that. I mean, they have well, kind of robes and stuff. They're flamboyant. But you know who's more like magicians is rappers. In fact, if you want to go on go on Tumblr hmm. and search for a blog called Rappers Looking Like Magicians. Oh, is this what you're going to tell me before? Yeah, yeah, write that down. I'll look at that mm-hmm. later. Well, actually, um, you know, that's actually quite interesting because when you think of a spell, it's just a string of 
gibberish words. Oh, it appears that way. It's just a poem, basically. A spell, it's just a poem. And maybe this is just not only rappers spitting out spells, but all types of music. Maybe even music done by Don Henley. Hmm. And maybe these songs actually do have power. Words have power. Words have so power. I would believe that. Yes. It's the intention of behind the words too. Hmm. And the intention behind the music. Hmm. Speaking of music, one of the best friends I made there at the church was their their um, sort of key guitarist. You know, oh, like a Paul Schaefer kind of a guy. Sure. And uh, this guy was named Stan. So what kind of music did um, Stan play? Like, what did it sound like compared to our local um, bands here? Stan was a real cool guitarist guy. He kind of, um, he, well, he said that he had a dream, that he wanted to be like Creed someday. Creed, you know, Creed is also, I, th I think they're a Christian band. Yeah, they, and, and, you know, he just said. And they're popular, they're famous. Man, you know, one day we guys, we're going to be big, like we're going to tour around the country and stuff. Like me, the two other guitar players, the, hmm. the, the third other guitar player, and, hmm. and be as big as Creed. And he was really into that. I think he even sent me a, like an email about that, like just promoting his band and stuff. Hmm. Does he have like a Facebook fan page? You know, he has a new MySpace. You know, it's for music now. A lot of people are getting this new MySpace thing. He's hmm. a cool guy. He just loved music and he loved playing his guitar and stuff. Uh, in fact, uh, he actually borrowed from me my old boombox. You know, oh, boom, the boombox. I have an old boombox from the late 1980s, and we got to talking with him, and he said, hey, you know, uh, can I borrow that or whatever, because um, it's classic, you know? You mean like, uh, like the um, breaking two electric boogaloo boombox type of thing, the old school breakdancing boombox where you hold it on your shoulder? Exactly. I, I love that. I wanted thing. one of those. And he thought it was cool too. I definitely got along with him. Oh. Now. I wish you told me about that boom box. I would have asked for it. Stan would go along and then, um, of course, the crow would be there and he, and he would organize these events that they would do hmm. where they would give out like free lunches and stuff. Did he insist on being called the crow or was that just something you felt comfortable? Crow is his working name. Like, that's normal for him. You couldn't just call him Greg? No. No. We would have these, these little, um, these, these free lunches where they'd put on this thing where they'd go, they'd, they'd make the Arby's look more like a regular Arby's. Just oh, a little bit. So they go back. Yeah. No, but then what they would do is they would invite everyone in the area and they would give them flyers and say, come here for free lunch. Was Enjoy the lunch, this free lunch. Was the free lunch actually Arby's? Because that wouldn't be bad. I do like their food. Yeah, they actually went to uh, an Arby's that was still open mm. and brought it over. And what they would do is, you know, the uh, uh, crow would really set this whole thing up. You know, he would, he would, he was definitely into leading this whole group here, right? And he would tell Stan, "Hey, Stan, play the guitar while we're here. You know, just for the people eating lunch, mm. and um, just start with like some nice secular music." You know, secular music. What you know, does that what mean? People listen to um, regular music, like whatever. Jason Mraz, okay? Who he says now? Listen very carefully to me. He would say to Stan. He would say, "Stan, why don't you start playing with that?" Okay, play some nice. Oh, I, don't I know, know Rod this, Stewart or something, right? I know where this is going. Right, right. This is very evil. Then slowly transition into Christian music. This is like hypnosis, mass hypnosis. Now take take steps, slow steps. How would you okay. even transition from Well, here's what he said to Rod Stan. Rod Stewart. He's, okay, Crow said to Stan the musician. He said, Stan, listen, okay. Start with Rod Stewart. Jason Mraz. You don't know I don't who, know that, who is. that is. And then, intermediate step, go to the theme song to Star Trek Enterprise. Odd. Is there a reason for this? That song is halfway between Christian music and regular music. And then go into the Christian music. Now, some people might start looking around like, what is this? <laughs> Just ignore them, but keep going. Those aren't the ones that you're focusing on. Because, you know, the idea is that they have to, they have, people don't know that they want to join a church. So you have to kind of trick them. 
Oh, so they want to, but they just don't know it. Yeah. I see how this works. Did it work? No. But the, the song didn't work. Oh. <laughs> but here's here's where the Satan part comes in, and this is a terrifying event. So that this occurred. is, and you're here. Yeah. What are you doing here? Are, are are you just eating along, watching, or are you standing next to Greg? I was eating. I was eating an Arby's um, ham sandwich. But no, th- that wasn't the day that this happened. This is later on the terrifying event happened, okay? Hmm. We were having a normal service at the uh, at the church, jamming with the rock and roll music, right? Everything seemed normal. Then all of a sudden, the lights went out, right? I'm seeing it in my head. Everybody stopped. And then there was this scratching noise, like a weird, like, staticky scratching noise. Like this? Well, not really, but yeah, kind of like this, more like that. So, where's it coming from? Is it underneath you, above you? Well, we looked around, and then, uh, like, Stan, the musician, jumped up and said, where's that sound coming from? Okay, let's turn off our speakers, and let's turn off the amps and all that, right? Mm. Uh, They turned it off, but the sound didn't stop. They said, make sure this stuff is unplugged. No? No. And it still was going on, right? This here? Yeah, exactly. All around you? Yes. And then, and remember, this is dark now because the lights went out. It's nighttime. That is kind of creepy. And then that sound stopped. And then a green glowing light appeared in the middle of the room. Oh, my. Sort of an egg-shaped green orb. Or sort of like when you uh, when you look at a bright light and then you close your eyes mm. and you see... And then a voice came out, out of nowhere. It seemed to be coming from everywhere in the room. But it was a deep, scary voice. And I wrote down what I remember it saying. Oh, okay. And let me read to you Go ahead. what it said. Now, before you start this, did the voice have any um, effect over it? Like, did it sound staticky or just basically demonic? It sounded distorted. But very deep. So, was it like a a tape being played back with a lilt? Like it rose in pitch sometimes and lowered? It did seem like the pitch shifted sometimes. That's weird. And here's what the voice said. Terrifying voice. And it said, This is Satan. Yes. Sometimes I get bored, so I come to Earth to F with people. Ha ha ha! It did really say that. It really said that. Yes. It now, did, but it didn't what, say. It didn't say the F. Did it say it the, the letter F? It didn't say. It didn't say the letter F. Oh, so the whole. So you're just thinking it said of our the real oh, F. F will do just fine for now. And then it went on. Wait, wait. Is there more F words here? No. Hmm. It went on and said, "Okay, to F with people," and then it said, "To test people." To see if good or evil will win. What you foolish mortals don't know. I'm just paraphrasing here because I wrote this after the fact, trying to remember what he said. Oh, not as you were hearing it. Okay. What you foolish mortals don't know is I actually am one of you in this very room. Hmm. I've been a member of this church from its very beginning. But who... Something to think about. See you later. And then <laughs> the lights came back on and everything went back to normal. Wow. But everyone looked around and they were shocked, of course. I can already see the scene in, in, in my head. I see hot Asian women looking around, fanning themselves. Obviously, everyone kind of went home. It was kind of a downer, you know, to end the evening mm. with. But I stayed behind and after everyone else had left, just the small group of us were left behind. And they said, listen, I said this actually because I'm, a, I'm an investigator, yes, right? right? I said, listen, I'm a paranormal investigator. I'm going to investigate this. Now, the message said, Satan has been in disguise as one of you from the very beginning. From the beginning very, of the church. From the very beginning, yes. So I, who I was here that. from the beginning of the church? Well, there were only four people who were there when the church was founded, before they even had the Arby's. Yes. And that was 
the crow, Greg, Greg the crow, the Christian magician, Lucy, the recruiter, her husband, who was the husband? Her husband worked at the recycling plant. Is that Damien? That was Damien. Hmm. See, I, I also wrote down my own notes, too. Yes, and Stan, of course, the musician. So they were the only ones who have been there from the beginning, so it must be one of them. Yes, makes sense to me. But who? So I, I told them, don't worry, I'm going to investigate this, okay? Don't worry about it, we'll mm. be fine. Well, what happened next? Well, I, I went home and I searched on the internet. Oh, good, good research. I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm guessing you used... Ask Jeeves. I used uh, Bing, actually. Who uses Bing? Is so that I good? I typed into Bing. Is that good, by the way? Well, look at the results I get. I typed into Bing, how do you catch Satan? And it said no. there was a church, uh, well, not a church, but there was a course being offered that said how to be an official Vatican Satan hunter. Sounds like a pretty kick-ass movie. Yeah. So I looked at it and it said, all you have to do is bring eight ounces of gold to Rome. How heavy is eight ounces? It's half a pound. How, how heavy is half a pound? Um, imagine a pound. I, imagine that I had a bag of hamburgers. One hamburger? Two. Maybe two? That's not well, too of bad. Course, gold is very dense, so eight ounces of gold is a small, is a small mini oh, bar. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like trilithium crystals. It says, we only accept gold, no money. Bring it to Rome. Not in the Vatican itself. I was going to say that. The Vatican? Not the Vatican, because this is a secret. Meet us nearby the Vatican, and we will teach you. So I did. Uh, as you know, I'm very wealthy. So it was no problem for me to get the gold. Yes, and to fly to Rome. They said, meet in this alleyway near the Vatican. Hmm. All right. So I went there at the appointed time, and there was an old, old man with a robe on, hiding out in the doorway. What color was the robe? It was brown. And he looked like he was like 80 or something. Hmm. And he said, do you have the gold? You know? And he said, okay, well, I found him in the tunnel, and he said, give me the gold now. This is getting kind of dramatic. That's, yeah, it is. <laughs> This is like a Dan Brown like, novel. There, there's no, like, no pleasantries going on here. It's just give me the gold. A, B, and C, that's it. Yeah, exactly. And the guy seemed a little bit suspicious to me, though, because... Was he, he Chinese? Had, well, he had a nice robe on. Well, he was an Italian guy, but he, he had, he had like, a, uh, a brown, you know, like, monk-like robe on, which was oh, very bro- good. Yeah, right, right, the monk robe. Except that underneath the robe, I could kind of see he was wearing a T-shirt. And the T-shirt looked like it was a Star Trek Voyager T-shirt. So Why is that weird? I wasn't totally sure whether he was... And the collar was stretched out, too, on the T-shirt. Oh. But, but hey, I said, I'm here anyway, so I'm going to follow through on this. You know, I believe this guy. He's going to teach me. Hmm. So he said, hand me the gold in this, in this dark tunnel that we went down into. That's weird. Why would you want gold as payment? You, you'd think they just want... Normal money. They own. They only trust gold. So oh, I handed it to him, and gold, he, he yeah. kind of looked at it, and he looked at it kind of funny, like, what is this? Because um, I should mention that when I bought the gold, I went on Bing, and I searched for cheapest gold. Yes. And it turned out to be, um, you know that chocolate gold that, that they sell? Yes. So I bought eight ounces of that chocolate gold. <laughs> so the guy kind of looked at it, and he looked at it funny, like, is there something wrong with this but then he went he didn't want to say anything so then he went okay whatever <laughs> and he said okay let me show you the secrets of hunting satan now and he opened up a a hatch in this tunnel oh and it was very smelly by the way and inside there were a hundred candles burning in this little room and he opened up a box a plastic box and inside there was a, a vial that said holy water hmm and he said use this and it will drive satan away is this holy water so that was a secret just holy water yeah but it was impressive because there was a lot of candles in that room but too you how much did, did you pay for the 
for the chocolate gold? About like a hundred fifty dollars. Because if you want holy water, I can go to downtown to that big church and get you. I think free holy water. Or just no, put but it in my listen, damn whiskey vial thing. This is official Vatican, like Pope style. This is Vatican holy water. water. Yeah. This is Vatican water. The the vial was even fancy. It had like gold on this edge. Hmm. So I said thanks. You know that was it, by the way. And he said, you know, you can go now. Was he eating the chocolate gold? Wait, is is chocolate is is chocolate gold edible? No, no, it's not. It's just a special, beautiful form of gold that's more brownish colored than regular gold. Hmm. Interesting. It's, it's not food. Interesting. And I, I, I assume it's valuable. Hmm. Well. So, you caught the plane back here. Yeah, I headed back here. And there were a lot of strange things going on in the church that I heard about and saw when I got back. Mm-hmm. That it just, it, raised it my just suspicions. Got, it, it just got weirder. Well, when I came back, they said, you have to see what happened. And they showed me in the walls, the walls of the church, were torn up with giant claw marks hmm. in the drywall. And they said, it just appeared this way one morning when we got here. It was just here. I think Satan did that. Well, claw marks. What did it... And the claw marks ran all the way across the wall, all the way from a light switch, all the way down to a power outlet. Did it, did it look like a giant's hand? It looked like something that must have been larger than a human hand, mm-hmm. most likely. Or maybe the fingers were just stretched out really far. Yes. Horrible claw marks. And any, you, you know any, what else? Any blood? There was no blood. Really, no blood from the walls. No. Typical, but not this time. Yeah. Interesting. Something else terrible happened that same day. Something with fire, maybe? Uh, something terrifying. Possession? So, Well, let me explain. I walked into the back room of the Arby's. Lucy was there alone, which is odd because she never likes to be alone, even for a second. This is the recruiter, yeah. the girl that got you into this thing in the first place. In fact, that's what she said. She said, I, I joined this church because I didn't want to ever be alone for even a second. But she was there alone, and she said, can I be left alone? Sorry, I'm, I'm reading this book. It's like Twilight or something. Uh-oh. Was it Penetration? No, not as far as I know. She should have been reading that. And I went, okay, okay, that's that's fine. And then I walked back out of the room, and... Not a minute later, I heard a horrible crashing noise, and I saw white stuff splattered all over the room. White stuff. And, now, you have to describe we this all, white stuff. Well, we all ran into the room to see what happened, and she was there, and she said, this bottle, it's a bottle of horsey sauce that was left over from the Arby's. Oh, wasabi mustard? Well, horsey sauce is flavored like horseradish, which is related to wasabi. Yes. Um, although I'm not sure if there's any actual horseradish in it, hmm. which is why they don't call it horseradish sauce, but they call it horsey sauce. Yes. You know, I just bought a bottle of wasabi mayonnaise. It's worth it. It's good. That's similar to horsey sauce. I like it. But um, so she said it. It was magically on, it was on exploded. This shelf, but the it white flew stuff flew across the room, hmm. and she was terrified. And she was so terrified that she said. I'm probably going to collapse. I don't know. And she said to her husband, you know, you need to watch me and take care of me constantly. For the, um, <laughs> she has quite know, the ego. Don't, you know, don't go out anymore to your job. But, mm-hmm. you know, you have wow, to just... Wow, really? You just have to take care of me she for sounds terrible. the next month. See, these... See, uh, she was having, she and was she having was, a nervous breakdown. And she was severely attractive. It's always them. They're always the ones who are so needy. I'm getting quite upset, Hmm. but go on. So I said, hey, guys, listen, listen, guys, listen. I'm going to figure this out because I'm a special authority, right? Mm -hmm. So put this in in charge of me, right? Put me in charge of this. You in charge of that, yes. Yeah. But then the crow said, yeah, he jumped up and he said, listen, I'm the leader here, okay? I can find out who Satan we can work together or whatever, but I'm going to be the one in charge. Wow, the ego on him. 
Now, Crow said, I will find out using divination, and I will discover mm. who is the Satan Classic here. divination. That's right. Did he do the whole thing with the uh, tree branches, dowsing rods? No. What he did was he took out a small uh, white uh, marker board, you know, like a dry erase board. Yeah. A small one, right? Like table size. Put it down with a pen next to it. And he said, uh, okay, and I want everyone to join hands, sit around this table, and everyone is going to hold each other's hand. You know, in, in, uh, in the church, there already was a lot of hand-holding, which mm, is really yeah. weird. It's, you know what? Honestly, those, it was those moments that made me feel the most uncomfortable because these are strangers. You'd hold hands with strangers. And yeah. you could tell, like at some point, they would loosen their grip, like they didn't want to touch you, and that would just hurt me more. Constantly. Uh. So he said, everyone get around the table and join. Actually, though, he, he said, everyone else join hands. And I'm going to tie up my own hands so you know it's not me. So he said, he took out a rope and he said, check this rope. Make sure it's a uh, completely normal rope. Oh. Uh. And he said, listen, I know, I know I'm a magician, Yeah, right? exactly. He's a Christian no, he magician. Said, I swear to you, this time I'm not using any magic tricks, okay? All right. Take this rope and tie my hands behind my back so I can't possibly uh, do anything, hmm. okay? Everyone else sit around the table and join hands so that you're not touching, so that you know that no one else is using their hands. Hmm. Put the board in the middle of the table, right? And then we'll turn off the lights and it'll be totally p pitch black. It's really weird. Like, it's... Why would he... Why not just hold his hands? He wanted to make sure, even more than everyone else, that his hands were tied. Oh, so he wanted to make sure that himself wasn't possessed or yeah, whatever. Yeah, he, he said, I need a volunteer to tie my hands, make sure it's tight, use any kind of knot you want. Uh, this rope is legitimate. Slip knot. Turned off the lights, it was totally dark. And I heard some like shuffling around. And like somebody bumped into me and went, oh, sorry. <laughs> but I, I didn't know what was happening. But I felt movement all over the place, right? There's movement all over the place. He called out and he said, spirits, tell us who is possessed by Satan here in this room. Uh, and that's the point of the div divination, right? So when the lights came back on, the board there had writing on it. And the writing said Christian on it. It had my name. Your name. That's right. Everybody, everybody looked at me and said, oh, we, you know, what happened here, right? Okay, I, I got to stop you here. I got to stop you. There's it's, one it, more it's, thing. It, it, it's almost time for our commercial break. Um, very interesting stories thus far. Who is the real uh, culprit? For you folks at home, as we go on the break, we'll give you time to... Uh, sort together your own clues there and come up with your own conclusions. Uh, please send your answers to our Facebook. Uh, just type in Google, uh, go on Google and or Bing and type in Doom Business Facebook and you'll find the Facebook page and um, uh, send me your answers. But after the break, we'll have Christian tell us the rest of the story and who the real culprit is. We'll be right back. Wambata at the KHIH Late Night News Desk. Strange lights were seen over Ala Moana today, witnesses reported. Strange green egg-shaped balls floating in the air and the smell of rotten eggs. <laughs> I don't know why that was funny to me. I'm just Sorry. Okay. I'll be back with more news at the top of the hour. Stand by for more Doom Business here on KHIH 8.30 a.m., where talk matters.
And we're back. So, Kristen, you were saying that they pointed their fingers at you as the culprit, as the Satan. Well, we don't know who wrote that, hmm. but somebody wrote my name on the board. You and see, everybody looked at me funny. Obviously. You see, on the break, I, I am um, I logged on to the Facebook, and I'm here on my laptop, my netbook, my Toshiba netbook, very small, very handy. I'm I'm looking at our Facebook, and no no messages yet, no messages yet. Um, I have my own theories on who it is. Yes, I have my own theory. I was just one on who it is, but let's let's hear the rest of your story first. Well. Everyone was pointing at me, and then Greg, I mean, uh, sorry, Crow, <laughs> said, he's the one. It was, it was a trick. Wait, who's the one? He's the one? Or well, he's he saying you're the me. one? Well, he pointed at me. So he grabbed the vial of holy water, which I brought. I left on the table. You know, I brought it to show everybody, like, hey, look what I got. Yeah. And he threw the holy water in my face, and it burned. Like, it smelled like vinegar, and it oh. burned my eyes. And I, and I went... I'm burning, I'm burning. Like it, well, that it would burn. Me. Yeah, that would burn. And they said, oh, it was definitely him mm. all along, and they freaked out. And then they said, okay, I mean, you know, pro- it's probably good now, right? You're not possessed anymore, right? Uh, oh, the holy the, water worked. The water, yeah. But then I said, oh, hold on a second. <laughs> what? I initiated my own investigation, and I will now reveal... The truth about who is actually Satan here. Interesting. Uh, you know those d- detective shows where, like, at the end, uh, everyone gets together and the de- detective explains. Oh, he's like, who did it? They're like standing in like a long line, and he's like walking back and forth. Yeah, with his hands behind his back, and he's, he's like talking to them. Exactly. That's imagine that this was what that was like. Mm. Okay. Very um. After I dried my face Columbo off, style, isn't it? I said Satan is very tricky. And he likes to play games, but he will twist his words in unexpected ways. Hmm. You, Stan, the musician, you were possessed by Satan. You see, back when you borrowed my boombox, I realized that someone had used it to dub a cassette tape. Then I remembered something about the Arby's. Most fast food restaurants have speakers built into the ceiling to play Muzak, you may recall. Hmm. So I traced where those speakers went, and they went to an old tape player that was hidden in a closet. An old tape player that hadn't been used for years. It was covered in dust. Except on the buttons that said play and stop eject, and those buttons had fingerprints Mm, on them. I see. So here's what I think happened. Stan, you borrowed my tape player, and you recorded a fake Satan message using your audio recording expertise. Hmm. And then you put it at the end of a 45-minute long tape. There was silence on the first 40 minutes. Oh, I see. Right. Pressed play, went out to do the show, and then when the timing was right, you started to hear those scratching sounds which were on the tape. And then you made a big show, didn't you, of turning off all the amplifiers to prove that the sound wasn't coming from your equipment. Hmm. And then you timed it just right so that we would all hear that message. And your little disco lights were used to create the green glowing light we saw. Oh, that was a special effect. And why would you do this? Well, Stan... The devil got inside of your head and used your own desire for fame against you. Does that make sense so far? You see, here's the thing. Hmm. I'm on this mailing list that gets sent out to all reporters, anyone wanting press releases and things like that. Right. Because I'm a paranormal investigator. Well, a couple days after that initial incident with the devil, I got an email from Stan and it had a, like a like a closed circulation thing. It wasn't BCC. It was regular CC. And it was being sent to all the news outlets and all the newspapers like the Midweek and the uh, the Weekly Newspaper Magazine and all that. The, the Star penny, the Star Advertiser. The Penny Saver. The Penny Saver too. And it and it was a press release that said strange events 
at a great local New Jesus uh, oh, I see what's, what's going lounge, on yeah, so, Fe- featuring the greatest Christian rock band on the planet. Oh, I see. So he's trying. He he was trying to be like Creed and get big. Well, and Stan, of course, said that explains why I don't remember sending that email. I was possessed at the time. Mm. Mm. You know, actually, for Stan's case, I just realized that if you just uh, add in a word, A, the letter A, it spells Satan. Oh, that's right. Yes. I didn't realize that. Mm Mm-hmm. You add in an A. -A S-A-T-A-N. I'm going to write that down. That clue was there all along. But that's not all there was to this story. There was a lot more. As I quickly turned around, remember I'm like a detective, right? Yeah, right. I whipped around. Like Columbo. And I said, there's more. And I pointed my finger at somebody else. You see, something else happened. Remember those claw marks on the walls? I remember, yes. Well, and I turned to Damien, um, Lucy's husband, and Mm -hmm. I said, Damien, someone saw you bringing in your work tools into the building the night before that Mm. that happened. You know, he was always talking about remodeling the building. Yes, I remember and later on, the next day, I called your boss, and your boss said that you sold a large amount of copper wire to the recycling center the next day. So I think Satan possessed you on that day. Wait, copper wire? That's right, valuable copper wire that was taken from the building. Satan possessed you on that day and used your greed against you. You were always looking at those $100 bills that I was giving you. (laughs) Right, right. I get it. I get it. So you see, Satan wasn't just one person. He said he he was someone in the room. Mm -hmm. And he said it was someone who had been with the church the entire time. But he didn't say he was only one person. And then I turned to Lucy and I said, Lucy, I think Satan possessed you also. When you uncharacteristically were alone in that room, even though you never want to be alone. Hmm. I think Satan possessed you to pick up that uh, bottle of horsey sauce and throw it. Why? It was to trick all of us into believing that Satan had been around ah, I the see. whole time. Right. To terrify us. Also, horseradish is, is used to ward off the devil in uh, Eastern European countries. So perhaps the hmm. devil really didn't like horseradish. I didn't actually know that. That's good. It's a true fact. Look it up. I, I will. I will. So I said, you were Satan that time. Now, and then finally, I turned to, to Crow. Yes, Greg, I was going to ask. He's next. And I said, to, I said to the Crow, Crow, hold up your hands to me. And then he held up his hands, and his palms had blue ink on them from the dry erase board. Right. And I said, you're the one who wrote my name on that board using your magic expertise, which you promised you weren't going to use. But that's just because Satan is possessing you right Mm. now to throw us off the track. And then I threw the holy water into his face, and he said, it burns, it burns me. And it really burns, I'm guessing, this time. Well, it burned the same way that it did when it flew into my face, anyway. Oh, no smoke, no lights? No, not really. But it really, he really said that it burned a lot, and it hurt him. Hmm. And he said, now you're cleansed. You see, Satan was trying to throw us all off the path of who it actually was. Mm. So finally, with everything revealed, now Satan is gone. I assume that we won. Hmm. Aren't you happy for us now? Is it the end? Well, I continued going to the church for a couple times, but um, a few months ago, as you know, I used up all my money building the Sky Fortress and also on that trip to Rome. (laughs) So Hmm. I told them one day, I, I went... Oh, um, I'm sorry I can't really donate as much money anymore because I'm kind of out of money now. And hmm. I, and then they stopped calling me, and they uh, defriended me on Facebook. Ouch. So, that hurts. Uh, I didn't bother going back there again. Hmm. That hurts. I feel, it, I, I feel I have to tell people this little trick, this little Facebook trick. You see, because when you defriend someone and they know about it, it hurts. It really hurts. If there's someone that you've added 
that you don't want to see um, around anymore, like on, on your wall, you, you don't want to see their updates anymore because it just hurts too much because of personal problems. Hover your mouse around their comment and you'll see a little drop down menu that says like remove comment or whatever. Or um, Okay, I'm writing this down. Or if you really want to be hardcore about it and, and hide all of their not see any of their updates, go to their home page, their main page, go to the friended button, the check mark it says we're friends, right? And you'll see a drop down list and it says remove from um remove updates from main wall whatever like media news streaming and you will not see their updates on your wall i've done this on my own personal page to like 300 people so the only updates now that i get are from three hot girls well, that was well, my that was, story. Um, that was a very good story about how I defeated Satan. I don't it know was about everyone me. else. I I got my prediction wrong. I thought it was Lucy. It was a trick ending because it was actually they everybody. all were Satan. But um, see, if, I thought by it was the way, Lucy. Lucy was spelled with an I. I thought. See, I have everyone's name here except for Stan. I didn't get that one down. But Lucy, I saw was Lucifer. Damien. Could have been Demon or just the movie Damien. You remember the, the, the movie series Damien? Yes, I remember that. And Crow, of course, was uh, Crowley or Crowley, however you, you want to pronounce it. The the Demon Conjurer, the, the, the guy who practiced witchcraft. That's a weird coincidence. Next week, I want to talk more about um, your thigh. What was it called? Yes. Some kind of laser was hitting you? or it, it was an alien laser beam. Now, does it come... This is normal, though. Is it, is, it's it like normal. A, is it like a James Bond thing where it's like f from a satellite and it's like chasing after you? Don't be ridiculous. It doesn't come from a satellite. It comes from a spaceship. Was it chasing after you? Like you're, you're driving, driving a limousine? It's hard to tell because it's invisible to our eyes. Hmm. It's only... But can you see it? The only known result is that it makes my implant glow. Hmm. And it hurts. Well, I mean, it looks painful right now. Mm. Well, folks, thank you for joining us today. Um, I hope you had a good time with this story. I know I did. I hope um, it was fun. I, I hope you um, you predicted who the culprit was. I got it wrong. Um, feel free to still send me your your predictions. I will read them. Let me check right now on my laptop. So far, no messages, no friend hmm. requests. Not that, not that I care about that. But um, I'm always open to ghost stories or any kind of supernatural story. So if anyone out there has any weird story to tell me, I will read it on the show. First, send it to my Facebook. Um, I'll have my... Um, I'll have the master of the Facebook that runs the page to send it to me immediately. Stat. Until next time, I am Shumai Shirishima, and this is Doom Business. That was Doom Business, your weekly dose of the paranormal. The time is now 1.30 a.m. Hey kids, you like basketball? Well, how about exercising your brain instead? Stay tuned for Hip Mozart with Shades McFadden, spelled F-A-T-T-E-N.